for today's cake, this is the most appropriate shirt I have. Let's see. Game of Thrones. I miss Game of Thrones. Anyway, because for today's tutorial, I'm teaching you how to make a dragon figurine. Someone asked if I can make toothless because I made a toothless cake a couple weeks ago that I posted on Instagram. And I decided, well, I don't want to make toothless again so soon because it wouldn't be so fun for me, but I can make a dragon and basically use all the same techniques I used for toothless, but it's just a different dragon. So hopefully the person that uh, requested that won't be disappointed that it's not toothless. And hopefully these techniques will help you if you ever need to make a toothless. So anyway, I made this little dragon. Maybe he's like an ice dragon, something like that. So stick around and learn how to make a dragon figurine. And doing my regular business, please, if you like these tutorials, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can keep making more videos because it's so much fun. And also don't forget, if you use any of my techniques in my tutorials, please tag me with the pics on Instagram. I'd love to see your work. My Instagram name. So to start, I just have this little mountain that I'm gonna build the dragon on. I'm gonna build the dragon straight on this, like as if I'm just building it directly onto the cake that I've carved. But if you think you can't finish it all in one setting, you can make some of it ahead of time. Just maybe start with the body without the legs so that its torso can perch on to, you can either carve down a dummy into a slant. Like if you want a slight slant, you can carve a dummy into a slant or you can take a flat dummy and sort to build some aluminum foil or something into a slant so his torso can rest. I'll sort of talk you through that later as I build the torso. To build the inner structure of him, I'm just gonna use these little pre-packaged crispy treats because I just need a little bit and I don't wanna make a whole big batch. So I always keep these handy. And I like to build the inside of some of my figurines with this because I think it adds some stability. It just makes it easier for me anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna start off with two. He's not gonna have a very wide body. So I'm just tearing a couple of these in half. And then I'm just going to compress them together. And for something like this, I really do want to kind of compress it down so it's nice and solid. He's going to come up like this. His head's going to come up. And his tail is going to wrap around, kind of shaping him like that. You always want to make this part skinnier than your final product because once you cover it in your fondant or modeling chocolate, he's going to get chubbier. So if you don't want him too chubby, you have to make this part pretty slender. Okay, and then you can just add pieces on. I'm not going to build this whole tail out. I'm just building the base where the, his tail is going to attach. And then I'm going to build out a little nub for his head so you can add to this. Elongate his neck. And I'm just adding on a little bit at the end for his head. And so then I just look at it from all the different angles. But if I picture he's going to be like this with his tail wrapping around, be like this. One arm coming down and then one arm on the side. So I've got my Rice Krispie treat and I'm just going to cover it with a little bit of Crisco. And here I have just a mixture of some Hot Hands modeling chocolate. They sent me a free sample of this sort of blue color and I mixed it with some white fondant. So I'm gonna have a blue dragon. And the reason I'm doing half and half is because I like the fact that the modeling chocolate stays moldable, but sometimes it can get a little melty and soft. So that's why I like to mix in a little bit of fondant. So I'm just going to sort of work it out with my hands till it's a little flat and long enough to cover my dragon. I don't want it too too thin because I want to be able to get rid of some of the texture of the crispy treat. But you don't want it too thick either because you don't want him to be too fat. So I just draped it over him like a little cloak. And then I'm just going to gather it all at the bottom. And I'm just pulling it together. Sort of pinching where his body is. Then I'm going to take some scissors and cut off the excess just really quickly. And then you can keep pulling to the bottom if you want to get rid of some more. 
and just keep trimming away the excess. And at this point you might see like this is where his neck is and it's a little movable. That's okay because we're going to reposition him once we put him onto the cake or the dummy, whatever you're drying him on. So you just keep doing that until you get as much of the excess away that you want. Okay, so now I've cut away a lot of the excess. So I placed him onto my mountaintop and just to secure him down and to get his neck into the position that I want, I'm just gonna take a skewer, shove it through his little neck. And that will hold him steady while I work on him. And then using my fingers, I'm just going to rub him a little bit to refine his shape. The good thing about a dragon is they are lumpy and bumpy and scaly, so you're not worried about getting it totally smooth like if you were working on a people figurine. So he looks like a seal. The blue's not helping, but we're gonna get him to look like a dragon by the end, I hope. Okay, so I have his base of his tail hanging off. We're gonna add to that later. And that's something you could add to if you were building this off of your cake. Maybe only work on this part in his head and his wings. And then when you go to put him on your actual cake, because you would have built sort of a slanted base for him to rest on while you work. And then when you carve your real cake, try to mimic that shape, you know, as closely as you can. Since it's cake, it will have a little give. So when you place this on top, you can sort of nestle him into your mountain cake and then build the legs on and the rest of the tail onto the cake at the time. But like with my toothless cake if you saw it on my Instagram page I just built it straight on the cake and so at this point I'm going to add the tail like I did so I want him to have a nice long tail that tapers at the end and sort of around like this so I've just rolled out a little tapered coil and then I'm going to come in I'm going to attach it and blend it into the little end that I had in place. So I've just got a little water down here and a brush and I'm going to paint a little on where I want his tail to be sticking. I'm going to use my tool to sort of get the curve exactly the way I want them to be. I'm just brushing the seam with a little bit of water and then I'm going to just take my tool and blend that seam out. That's what's great about the modeling chocolate is it allows you to keep blending and the seams hide really, really well. Okay, and then to add some scale detail to him, I have a straw, I just cut it in half. So I'm going to pinch it like this. And I'm trying to get it to have one side that is creased so that it comes to a bit of a point. Okay, and then from the side, I'm just gonna cut it down like this. Slit. And then I'm gonna cut away like that so it leaves me and then here's some extra fondant to show you so with this all you have to do is you just push and give you some scales depending on how far you push and at what angle you'll get deeper scales or more shallow scales. You just push straight down like this. You look like that. You can have more dimension. Okay, so you wanna just come in and you wanna alternate in between the previous scales. You're gonna push in and sort of flick up. Okay, 
Now as you're getting to the smaller area toward his tail, you might want to make the scales a little bit smaller. So I'm just sort of grabbing less of the fondant and doing just small scales. Not pushing as deep, not going as far back and shoving it up. I'm just sort of grabbing a little area and making these little scales. And then they're gonna sort of trail off. I don't want them covering his whole tail. So let's stop it there. So I imagine dragons with, imagine dragons. <laughs> anyway, I imagine dragons with little front arms. So I don't have that much fondant. So usually to sort of visualize it, I just roll out a little coil and stick it on there to see if it's about the size I want. And then once I've decided that's about the size I want, flatten out one part, the top part of his little arm so that it can go up against his body. Maybe brush a little water on and stick it on there. And I'm going to use my tool to blend it into his body. I'm going to add a little water to stick it down. Again, if you're making this ahead of time on a separate form, you wouldn't put the arms on yet until you have stuck him to your cake and then you would make these arms. So once his arm's in there, doesn't look fierce yet. You have to add his talons and whatnot. So I'm gonna add some little creases. Okay, and then you're gonna need a place to insert his little talons. So I'm just making three little holes where his talons will stick in too. So they actually look like they're growing out of his foot. So for his back leg, um, they're a little bit longer. So I have a piece of fondant that I'm gonna roll so that the top half is thicker like this, sort of a elongated teardrop shape. And the chunky part's gonna be his, his thigh, which I'm gonna attach here somewhere. And then it's a little difficult to do at this angle, but I've creased it like that. And then it's gonna come forward a little bit. stick some water onto the cake so that I can get his foot to stick and then I can manipulate the shape with my tools so then I'm just going to start pushing the fondant where his thigh is into his scales and tuck it underneath so it looks like it's actually coming from his body and just not stuck on the side So you just have to keep manipulating this, but it's easier to do it while it's on the dragon form. It's okay if you squish down some of the scales, you can always lift them back up later. So once you have his thigh attached, you can lift his foot and manipulate it into the shape you want. If you have to cut some off, you can do that. Now I'm just going to start building out his head. I'm just brushing a little water on. I'm going to attach some of the modeling chocolate fondant mixture. Or melt the seams a little. I'm going to decide how I want him looking. Do I want him looking forward a little bit or completely profiled? I'm going to have him like a three-quarter. And if you're finding that the modeling chocolate is a little too soft, you can just throw him into the fridge for a few minutes, not too long. So the new part that you've been working on sets up a bit. So I'm going to start by just making some indentations where his eyes are going to be. You can kind of dig in there and scoop out so that the top sort of protrude a little bit. You can see that? So if you just scoop and pull out, drag, drag forward a little bit. You can start to pull out some features.
I don't really have a dragon in mind that I'm doing. I'm just uh, playing around, having fun right now, so. not easy doing it with my left hand. I'm trying not to block the camera. This is modeling chocolate, so it does have chocolate in it. So to set it a little bit, because it keeps wanting to do this, I'm just gonna give it a hit with my Magic Free Spray, just to set it up and make it a little firmer. You don't wanna go crazy with that though, because it will make it wet. so fun about making dragons is that they're imaginary creatures so you can pretty much do whatever you want you can have horns So before I put his eyeballs into their sockets, I'm just gonna shade a little bit. So I mixed up some dark blue petal dust with some gray petal dust. And I'm just adding a little shadow in there because I want it to be behind his eyes. So I'm gonna start with white eyes. I don't know if I'm gonna end up with white eyes, but that gives me the option. And you can see the, how the shadow is above his eye. Makes him look a little more menacing. And for the inside of his mouth, I'm just going to darken it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a tongue. I'm just starting off with kind of a leftover gray color I had because I can use petal dust or something, but I don't want it to be like bubblegum pink or anything. I'm just gonna mix a little burgundy, put a little burgundy food color on my palette. I have some of my vodka that I'm just going to mix in a little bit. And then I think I'm gonna take some of this vodka and mix in some of the early petal dust I had in the palette like that, just to uh, liquefy the petal dust. So I'm shading in his eyeballs. Now I'm just gonna go through the tedious task of giving him teeth. I'm just using little white fondant that I'm rolling, tiny little balls, and then with my X-Acto knife, I've wet his little gum line. I'm gonna place them on. It would probably be much easier if I used royal icing and just pipe them in, but I don't so I roll his teeth in. So I'm just going to paint a little bit around the base of his teeth. Just darken up a line around the base of his teeth. And then dirty up his teeth a little bit. You don't want them looking all pearly white. Now we're just going to add some talons. So I'm just going to put a little water in the little holes I made. I'm going to roll out some white fondant. And then, of course, you'll have to dirty him up a bit. So I'm gonna make him darker by where they exit his foot. So now for the tricky part, his wings. So I want his wings to be about this long. And I don't know if I have a total particular shape in mind, but let's sketch out some wings. Maybe a bit 
kind of shaped like this. There's kind of a peak up here, and then there would be sort of ribbing like this. And then these would have convex curves, concave, convex, something like that. So then I'm going to use my Sharpie. Sharpie's dead. Yes, it is. Let's try this guy. What the heck, Sharpie? Third time the charm. Oh, heck yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to draw out my shape. Some parchment paper. I don't need to worry about these lines. These lines were just to get me to draw my little whoop whoops. Okay, then I'm going to cut them out. Like this. Left hand scissors. Okay, so I cut out my wing shape, and then I'm just gonna hold it up to my dragon and say, do I like it? And I think it's a little too long, so maybe I'll cut it off. So his wings are going to look something like this. As usual, if you don't want to freehand something, or you can find a template on the internet. Now, once you have your template, it's gonna serve you for the right and left side. You're just gonna flip it over to make both wings. Okay, so then all you have to do is I have some floral wire. This is 18 gauge. Probably wanna use around 18 or 20 gauge. I'm just gonna hold it up to my template, leaving some extra that's gonna go into the dragon. And I'm just going to, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, hold it up to my template. Usually I like to fold out a center point. It's gonna go there. Like that. Gonna be about your wing. Oops, mark where I want to trim this. So about there, the end. So, trim that off. And the other one. You can either just bend it off of here, or you can flip this. So we have our two structures for our wing. So now I have some wafer paper and I'm just going to fold it gently like that so that the smooth side is together. And then I'm going to trace my wing. And then I'm going to cut it out. That's one set of wings and then you do the other set. So for that one, we did facing this way, and for the other one, you wanna flip it and do it facing this way. So now you have two sets of wings. The pencil marks are on the textured side of the paper because that's gonna be on the inside. When you put them together, they're actually going to be smooth side out. So you have a right wing and a left wing like that. Then what I do is I have my paper potion. I show you how to make this in the uh, wafer rose paper tutorial. So if you wanna check that out. So then I'm just gonna spritz lightly, both of the papers. And then I wanna wet my wire. And I'm gonna place it on the paper, push it down. Then I'm gonna lay my other wing on top of that. You want to pinch your wings together. Okay. 
making sure it's well adhered to your wire. And you can set that aside for now. And do the other one. And at this point, you can trim them if you want to. You want to leave a little overhang above the wire to make sure the wire is sandwiched between the two sheets of paper. And you have your two wings. And you go this way. <laughs> okay, and then you can bend the wire a little bit this way. Just make sure your paper's not too wet at this point when you're bending the wire. It's a little bit opposite. Okay, so now I'm just going to paint both sides. This is just the same mixture I used earlier with the dark blue and the gray petal dust diluted with a little vodka. You don't want to get it too sopping wet. And I'm going to set that aside to dry. If you have a dummy, it's good to stick it into that. So I've got both wings painted. I like the sort of mottled effect that the wafer paper gives them. They're a little flimsy right now, so you just need to give them a little time to harden and set up. If you want sort of a tattered looking wing, you could come in and really like stick some water in there and let the wafer paper eat away, for instance. Wanting this to be a tattered wing, part of the wing. If you just keep going in, it's going to rip the paper. And so you could have little holes in your wings or little tears that are going to make it look like a tattered wing, like maybe a dragon that was just in battle or something. So while his wings are drying, I'm just going to shade him, which is the fun part. I just got some more of that mixture of the gray and the dark blue petal dust. I'm just going to add a little bit of shimmer to him with some gold shimmer petal dust, luster dust. I'm just going to skim the top of some of the scales. Okay, so the wings have dried enough. They've become rigid enough for me to put them in his body. So, just want to these little side pieces to put on the end of his tail. These are also just wafer paper. And then for his wing, I rolled out a really thin strip of fondant, and I'm going to wet the back of it. I'm just going to lay it over the top of the wing. And I'm just going to press it down like this over the edge. Then I'm going to take very thin strips of fondant coming from this point here down to the point of the wing. So I'm going to do that on all of these. You would add that detail to the front and back of both of the wings. And then to give it some definition, I'm going to paint it a little bit darker. You don't have to add these if you don't want to. I think the wings looked fine before, but in case you wanted to. I'm just going to add a few finishing gold touches and he'll be all done.